As you take your GED mathematics test, most questions will require you to select your answer from one of five choices. Then you'll carefully fill in the corresponding circle in your answer booklet completely using a number two pencil. Some questions will ask you to mark your answer in a grid, either a coordinate grid or the standard grid. Each requires you to find the answer to the problem and enter the answer directly onto the grid. Let's begin with the standard grid to see how you would solve a typical problem and enter the answer onto the grid. The standard grid has five columns. Each column has one or more math symbols and the numerals 0 through 9 in circles. This grid can be used to display any positive numerical answer requiring up to five positions, including whole numbers, decimals, and fractions. However, since there's no negative sign, your answer can never be a negative number. For example, the following problem involves the use of decimals. To test the effect of a fertilizer, pea plants are measured each week. One plant measured 31.7 centimeters last week and 47.8 centimeters this week. In centimeters, how much did it grow during the week? If we subtract 31.7 centimeters from 47.8 centimeters, the result is 16.1 centimeters. The plant grew 16.1 centimeters during the week. So we need to enter 16.1 into the proper standard grid for that problem on the answer sheet. The first line of boxes across the top of the standard grid is always blank. The boxes are there for you to enter your answer one numeral or symbol per space. However, since the scoring computer cannot read the written numerals and symbols, you must convert them to an answer the computer can read. To do this, fill in the proper circle in the column below each numeral or symbol. In the box at the top of the first column, you wrote the numeral 1, so go to the circle underneath it that contains the number 1 and fill it in. Be sure to stay in the same column. The second box contains a 6. Fill in the circle containing the 6 in that vertical column. The third box contains the decimal point. Fill in the decimal point circle under your written symbol. The final numeral of your answer is a 1. So find the 1 circle in that column and fill it in. When you are finished, your answer will look like this. Your solution to the problem is written across the top of the standard grid, one numeral or symbol to a box. Below each numeral or symbol, one circle will be completely filled in. Notice that the last box on the right is empty. For this problem, that column can be left blank. Be sure that you have filled in the correct circle for the number or symbol you've written at the top of the column. Remember as well, you will not be graded on the answer written across the top of the grid, only on the circles which you have filled in. In the problem we've just solved, we only needed four of the five columns provided. We filled in the first four columns, but we could have used the last four columns instead. That's because the scoring computer looks only for a correct pattern of darkened circles. Standard grids can also be used for answers involving fractions. For example, let's take the question, Mrs. Stone bought seven raffle tickets at a bazaar. If there were 200 raffle tickets sold altogether and only one prize to be given, what's the probability that Mrs. Stone would win? The answer is seven out of 200 or seven two hundredths. Using one numeral or symbol per box, we write the answer across the top of the standard grid. Then we begin filling the circles with the matching numerals and symbols. First, we fill in the seven circle directly under our written numeral seven. Then the fraction line symbol under the fraction line we drew to separate the fraction's numerator from its denominator. Finally, being careful to keep filling in only one circle per column, we fill in the circles under the numerals we wrote for the denominator. Once completed, our answer should look like this. The fraction is written out across the top of the standard grid and one circle is filled in below each numeral or symbol. As we mentioned earlier, 
A standard grid can be used to display the answer to a problem as a fraction or a decimal. For example, if the answer to a problem is a fraction, such as one quarter, you can also enter it into the grid as its decimal equivalent of 0.25. Either answer will be scored as correct. If the answer to a question is a mixed number, such as 3 and 1 half, you must convert it to its fraction or decimal equivalent before entering it on a standard grid. When the answer to a question is a point on the coordinate plane, that answer is recorded on the coordinate grid. The grid represents some of the points on the central section of the coordinate plane. Each point has an X and a Y value. For example, if the answer for a question was 3, negative 4, this point would be filled in. On the other hand, if the answer for a question was negative 5, 0, this point would be filled in. All points are described by two whole numbers, so answers will never require a fraction or a decimal. Also remember, as you're taking the test, do not mark answers to these questions in the test booklet. You must mark your answer only on the appropriate coordinate grid on your answer sheet. Let's take a look at a sample question to see how its answer is marked on a coordinate grid. Three vertices of a rectangle are shown in this graph. What is the location of the fourth vertex of the rectangle? Knowing certain properties of a rectangle and seeing three of its vertices, you should be able to determine the location of the fourth vertex. The correct answer for this question is the point negative 2, negative 4. That point, and only that point, should be marked on the coordinate grid. And take note, a grid marked with more than one point will be scored as incorrect. You've now seen how to mark an answer using the standard and coordinate grids. When using the standard grid, remember to use the empty boxes at the top to record your answer, one numeral or symbol per box. You must then fill in the circles that represent those numerals or symbols using no more than one circle in each column. Answers for these questions can be whole numbers, fractions, or decimals, but not mixed numbers or negative numbers. When using a coordinate grid, remember that you must have an X value and a Y value to plot a point. No answer for these questions can have a coordinate that is a fraction or a decimal. And mark only the one circle that represents your answer. Good luck and good results on your test. You are permitted to use a calculator to help you answer some of the questions on the GED mathematics test. The purpose of this video is to give you an opportunity to become familiar with this calculator before you take the test. The GED mathematics test is in two booklets with 25 questions in each. You're allowed to use a calculator only in booklet or part number one. You may not need a calculator for every question in part one but the calculator will be available for those questions where it would be helpful to you. You may use only the calculator provided at the beginning of the test by the GED examiner. The calculator you see in this video is the same calculator you'll use when you take the mathematics test. To get started, always press the ON key in the upper right hand corner of your calculator. After doing so, you should see a single zero followed by a decimal point, and DEG in small letters in the upper center of the screen. If anything else appears, press the red AC key located midway down the calculator on the right-hand side to clear the screen. If either before or during your testing session you don't see the zero and DEG, 
immediately notify the examiner and ask for another calculator. You'll notice that this calculator has many keys. Don't worry. You'll only need to use specific keys. We'll identify those keys and demonstrate their use in this video. You need to use two types of keys. Keys for entering numbers and keys for performing functions with the numbers you've entered. A number is entered by pressing a number key into the calculator, very much like you would enter a telephone number. If you need to enter a decimal number, use the decimal point key that appears immediately to the right of the zero key. While there are many function keys on the calculator, you're not expected to use them all. The four arithmetic functions are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, represented by signs familiar to you. You should also learn to use the following function keys, equals, change sign, backspace, all clear, clear, and square root. Let's take a look at how each of these function keys works as we solve a series of problems. Before beginning any problem, press the AC, or all clear, key to make sure there are no numbers in the calculator's memory that could affect your answer. The red C, or clear, key will only clear the last number entered immediately before pressing the C key. To do any arithmetic with this calculator, simply enter the problem as it is written in your test booklet. For example, in the problem 8 minus 3 plus 9, you'd enter 8 minus 3 plus 9, and finally, equals. Your answer should be 14. Let's try another problem. 211 plus 316 plus 114. Oops, we entered 115 by mistake. There are two ways to correct an error like this. One way is by using the backspace key. The backspace key, the one with the solid triangle on it located above the 8 key, allows us to remove one character at a time without erasing the entire number entered to this point. We press the backspace key once and the 5 disappears. Now I can enter 4, making the entry 114. You could also have pressed the red C, or clear key. That would have erased the entire entry, 115, and you would then have to re-enter the entire number correctly. For some questions, you may need to find the square root of a number. This is the only function that requires the shift key. The shift key is located on the upper left-hand side of the calculator. The shift key accesses the second function for each key, much like the shift key on a keyboard. The second functions are notated in orange or gold above each key on the calculator. Unlike a keyboard, however, the shift key and the function must not be pressed at the same time. Notice that the square root symbol is in orange or gold directly above the square root, or x squared, key on the third from the left key in the top row. The square root function is the second function for this key. Here's what you would do to find the square root of 81. Press the AC key to clear the calculator before you begin a new problem. Then enter the following, 8, 1, shift, and square root. Note that the word shift appears in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. The correct answer appears immediately after you press the square root key. In this problem, the correct answer is 9. The final problem we'll work involves negative numbers. Let's do the following problem. 16 minus negative 5. To do this problem, we will use the change key located on the left-hand side of the calculator, three keys down from the top. The calculator is already on, so we press the AC key again to clear the calculator. Then we begin by entering in the 1 and the 6 to enter the positive number 16. We press the minus function key, then the 5 key, 
To convert the 5 to a negative number, we press the Change key. We press the Equal key to get the final answer, 21. You have now seen all the types of arithmetic you may have to do on Part 1 of the GED Mathematics Test. If you feel you need further review, ask for assistance from your GED examiner. Additional examples are given as part of your test instructions. Good luck on the test, and good luck in your future.